Hello everyone and welcome back to another Unboxing Tomorrow adventure in electronics, robotics, and communication systems, and a blockchain based game simply called Decentraland. As you already know, there are plenty of exciting projects already happening in blockchain, or replicated state machines as they used to be called. This is especially true in my opinion when these projects are decentralized, meaning that they don't depend on a central authority or geographic location. If you'd like to test this one for yourself and you have a computer handy, this time it is very easy because all you have to do is open a new browser tab, navigate to play.decentraland.org, and you're practically in. Officially, the best browsers to use are Chrome and Firefox. If you want to watch the full video, where I compare all of my browsers side by side, then look for Unboxing Tomorrow on the decentralized platforms Minds.com, Odyssey Video, and BitTube.tv. These are free platforms, but you can only find the full video if the platform is decentralized. Before I jump in, the usual disclaimers. I am not a financial advisor, and nothing in this video should be taken as financial advice. I am also not affiliated with the Decentraland project, other than being an ordinary user since the start of this summer, although I do hold the official Decentraland token, which you might know by its symbol MANA. The Decentraland project, or DCL as some people call it, is developing rapidly, and because of this I am not going to be a very exhaustive source, and I may get a few details wrong. This will become a multi-part video, so if you have feedback to share, then share your thoughts in the comments, or you can contact me on the official unboxing-tomorrow.com website. If you have not already installed a cryptocurrency wallet extension for your browser such as MetaMask, you can play for free as a guest, however this will exclude you from most if not all in-game trading, and you won't have access to other features such as the friend system or the built-in builder. If you do have a wallet extension, this is definitely an improvement because it lets you save your in-game progress indefinitely on the Ethereum blockchain. Third, if you have the wallet extension and the MANA token, MANA is effectively the main in-game currency. While I don't expect you'll have much trouble, if you're asked by someone you don't know or can't identify, never give away your crypto, your private key, or your recovery phrase. If terms like private key are unfamiliar, I recommend bookmarking my previous video, Bitcoin, What It Did Differently, since it covers the basics, including other topics like immutability. And finally, at this time, I do not offer cryptocurrency or crypto products and services. I do have affiliates that I'll get to later, but if you see any spammers using the Unboxing Tomorrow name in the comments to sell crypto products and services, you should go ahead and report it. And with that out of the way, back to the game. If you're following along, there's a friendly tutorial that will guide you on how to move around and interact with other users in the digital world. At any time, you can fast travel by typing slash go to, followed by an XY position. I have spent a good slice of the summer exploring the world randomly, and believe me when I say this game is huge. So if you see a place you'd like to visit for yourself, you can look for the coordinates in this part of the screen. If you're having graphics problems, you can find my troubleshooting steps in the full video. Otherwise, you can also check in-game settings by clicking the gear in the lower right corner. There's really no wrong way to get started, but for this demonstration, I'll jump right down into Genesis Plaza. Genesis is at the origin of 00, Zero and you can find 8 more plazas scattered throughout. Those areas happen to be maintained by the core development team and Decentraland's Decentralized Autonomous Organization, or DAO for short. There are additional land parcels and estates that you can develop if you purchase them using cryptocurrency. To see all of this on a larger map, press M as in Mike, you can switch views with V as in Victor, or see more controls with C as in Charlie. At this point you could also explore with the X button, but for a first time run I recommend checking your microphone settings first in the lower left corner. A red X in this position means that you're muted, and you won't be running around making random noises because of a hot mic. From Genesis Plaza, there are areas in proximity that I think are worth visiting sooner or later. The west exit leads to a hot air balloon ride, which is nice for adjusting those graphic settings. The east exit leads to a sky tram, wearables collection, and auditorium. The north area behind the stage, and there is no door in this direction, contains a museum showcasing Decentraland's project milestones. And the south exit leads to the NFT hallway, the trade center, and the builder tutorial, where you can find external links 
to the official white papers. Clicking an external link in-game will load the page in a new browser tab, but only after you allow it. You will probably do this a lot if you're here for the artwork. Wherever you go, there are plenty of easter eggs and hidden details being added constantly. So pretty much expect the unexpected. According to the official site Decentraland.org, the coding is mostly done through JavaScript and Node, and TypeScript makes up a large portion of their GitHub repository. There's also a graphical interface simply called the Builder that lets you program in a drag and drop environment without the need to write code. In either case, the content is served up using a combination of BitTorrent and the IPFS interplanetary file system. This has potential to make it highly robust against censorship, and I'd like to dive into this in part two. Wearable items are crafted in 3D programs like Blender, and from what I'm told, you can fit them to human models that you can find on the official GitHub. This summer, Dapcraft and longtime NASA collaborator Nick Graham actually recreated the Apollo moon landing and released wearable jackets to commemorate the event. And speaking of events, you can catch these easily by checking the website, by pressing the X button, or by checking this pillar. The underlying code can interact with data from the outside world, basically to the point that a live band and the virtual audience can see each other in real time. And hopefully that covers the basics because it really is exciting to see these applications quickly emerging from a technology that's new. Now, in part two, I'm going to cover non-fungible tokens and how they relate to live concerts, areas that are good for learning how the blockchain works, a couple of rough patches that are being worked on, and where I think this project is headed long term, based on things I've heard from other new players. As usual, these videos are made possible thanks to support from Patreon, where you can find a monthly poll and lessons learned on technical builds, and my affiliate TorGuard Online Privacy Protection Services. TorGuard VPN, or Virtual Private Networks, is the service that I use to protect my online data from tracking, data collection, and even attacks on public networks. To help protect your privacy and help this blog at the same time, you can see the links in the video description for information on VPN, private email, business VPN, and even physical VPN routers. Stay posted for the next video, and as always, have a great day.